Today we'll take a look at a new accessory for the Ag Games Legends Ultimate called the Legends Bit LCD. This impressive arcade marquee allows for a digital recreation of the artwork you remember while playing in the arcades. This TFT LCD panel supports 1920 by 360 pixels and has great viewing angles. While standing near it, you do get the feeling it's simply a backlit arcade marquee. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. I want to make you aware, if you visit wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash al dash bit lcd, it'll take you to the bit lcd guide. This guide is available now and provides additional insight on how to install the bit lcd, some common Q&A points that may be of interest to you, and a comparison between the bit pixel and the bit lcd, as well as how to batch convert your own marquee images if you're interested. Please take a look around. Hopefully you'll find all the information you're looking for there. In this video, we'll expand on the guide by providing a closer look at what the device looks like before and after installation. If there are any sections that you're not interested in, there are chapter markers below where you can skip to the next section of interest quickly. I would like to thank Ag Games for sending this bit LCD for guide development and to be able to show it to you a bit early. While I hope this video is helpful, the guide will always have the latest information and some points mentioned in this video may be slightly different in the future. Now that we've unboxed the bit LCD, let's move over to the workbench so we can take a better look at what was included before we move on to the installation. First off, the included manual was going through some revisions while filming this video. I'll place a link under the resources section of the guide for the latest. The package does include a 4-port USB 2.0 hub, which we'll use for connecting the USB cable going to the bit LCD. There is also a long power cord, which will extend from the bit LCD down to the back panel of the ALU, as well as a 2-port power splitter. A wall mount kit and some mounting screws for the ALU are included, in addition to a long USB cable, which will go from the bit LCD down to the 4-port hub. Looking at the back of the bit LCD, there are two main areas of interest. On the far left, we have the USB port where you will need to connect a FAT32 formatted USB stick. Also, make sure the small switch is flipped towards the USB port or you won't get a signal. Towards the middle, you will find the power input, the USB port for connecting to the hub, and an HDMI port which will be supported in a future update. Now we'll move on to the installation. At this point, I had the bit pixel installed. Regardless if you do or don't, start by powering off the ALU, then disconnect the power at the back of the cabinet. And I like to remove all the screws except the one at the very top middle. And then I'll go ahead and remove that last screw and then gently bring the back panel towards you, but be cautious as there are three wires that are connected to it. Unplug the blue ethernet cable and the two black power cables from the panel and set it aside for now. If you had previously installed the Legend Spit Pixel, go ahead and unplug it and remove the power adapter and USB cable going to the Bit Pixel. In my case, I was using the LBPA third party board to the Bit Pixel. I'm going to disconnect it and reconnect everything back the way it was from Mac Games. You will need a USB stick dedicated for the Bit LCD. The one you see here is Overkill. A 16 or 32 gigabyte USB stick will likely be more than enough. Another important note, whatever drive you use for the bit LCD will need to be formatted as FAT32. I have step-by-step -step instructions in the guide to assist you with that. The USB stick will be used to download the artwork and MP4 files or any images that you choose to copy to the USB stick yourself. I'll disconnect the power and USB cable going to the bit pixel and then gently slide the bit pixel up and remove it from the cabinet. If you currently have the stock marquee, you'll want to install the included screws in either pattern 1 or 2 as shown here. On my ALU 1.1 cabinet, I use pattern 2 for the bit pixel, which is just fine for the bit LCD as well. 
I'll quickly point out the location where I had previously placed the screws for the bit pixel. Next, I'll position the new bit LCD over the screw mounts and go ahead and remove the plastic cover. Moving to the back of the ALU, unplug the small black and white LED cable as it's no longer needed. Now disconnect the USB cable going to the main board of the ALU, then plug the USB cable going from the control panel into the side of the included USB hub that only has a single port. Connect the mail end of the USB hub back into the main board of the ALU. Take the included long USB cable and connect it to the first port on the USB hub. And the other end of the included long USB cable should be connected to the USB port near the middle of the bit LCD, the port near the power input at the back of the panel. Take one end of the long power cable and plug it into the power port next to the USB cable you just connected at the back of the bit LCD. We're almost done. Connect the two power cables that were plugged into the back panel into the power splitter. And we'll take these three connections and plug them into the back panel, starting with the power to the bit LCD. Plug it into the back panel. And then plug in the two power cables connected to the splitter. And the final connection is, of course, the blue Ethernet cable. So connect that one. Now position the back panel and reinstall all the screws. Plug in the power cable and we are done with the bit LCD installation. Let's move on to the software. Your Legends Ultimate will need to be on firmware version 5.66 or higher to follow along. To check if an update is available, navigate to the Settings tab, then locate the version tile. If you see version 5.66 or higher, you're good. If not, press A and follow the prompts to update the firmware. Next, we'll download and install the BitLCD application and update the firmware and resources for the BitLCD. To do that, navigate to the App Store X tab, select BitLCD, press A, and A again, then the Install button. After a few moments, the installation will complete. Launch the BitLCD application and move to the far right button, Update BitLCD. Now select Update BitLCD Firmware. The firmware will then download and get applied to the bit LCD. Wait for the bit LCD to restart. Once complete, go back into Update Bit LCD and select Update Bit LCD Resources. This will create the folder structure for your USB stick as well as download and install all the latest first party marquee images. Once done, back out of the application and navigate over to the Games tab and check out your new bit LCD. Before we look at the bit LCD in action, I want to briefly highlight some of the features that differ between the bit pixel and the bit LCD that you may find important. First off, I personally really like the 8-bit look of the bit pixel. My opinion on that has not changed. However, it's important to note that the bit pixel resolution is 128 by 32 pixels, while the bit LCD is 1920 by 360 pixels. With the higher resolution display, you'll see very clear and vibrant recreations of the original marquees you remember. Another important note that unless you're using the LBPA board for the bit pixel, it won't turn off when the power to the ALU is turned off. It has a separate power adapter which will remain on unless you unplug it. However, when turning off the ALU with the power button, the bit LCD backlight will be turned off as well. Using OTG is kind of a mixed bag. On the bit pixel, you need to unplug the USB cable and power cycle the machine to use OTG. With the bit LCD, you don't have to unplug it nor power cycle the device. Do note though, the HDMI port on the bit LCD does not currently support Windows Display Monitor mode. This is expected to be supported in a future update. That is, you can't connect a PC or similar device to the bit LCD's HDMI port and expect to see anything yet. I did try it to make sure and didn't have any luck. Also, a separate power supply is no longer needed for the bit LCD as it is for the bit pixel. All the power is supplied by the ALU power adapter. This makes for a much cleaner install. 
Another thing I was asked to try by a viewer is that the bit pixel and the bit LCD work at the same time. I gave it a try, and since Pixelcade X and the bit LCD are two separate services that are running, they were both able to display images at the same time. This means you could mount the bit LCD to a wall nearby and use the bit LCD inside the cabinet. This was pretty cool and wanted to mention it. Another thing you may be curious about are the viewing angles. Now, my camera is not the latest or most impressive, but if you look closely, you'll find the viewing angles here in a dimly lit room look very good. Getting closer to the image, the quality looks impressive in my opinion. The colors are vibrant and really stand out, and an excellent digital recreation of the original arcade marquees. Here I've turned on every light in my office to make sure it's clearly visible. Again, the image looks great even in a brightly lit room. One thing to mention though is that there is a border surrounding the marquee that is roughly one inch at the top and bottom and one and three quarters inches on the left and right side. Not a big deal to me, but it may be to someone else and I wanted to make you aware of it. Earlier in this video, when we went to the update bit LCD option and selected the update bit LCD resources, the resources that we updated are the first party artwork from At Games that are stored on the USB stick at the back of the bit LCD. At the time of this recording, there were a number of games that didn't have artwork. The ones that do are the Taito arcade games and Gottlieb. Of course, by the time you're viewing this video, all of that may have changed. For the marquees that exist, they are very well done and look beautiful on this cabinet. If you were to remove the USB stick from the back of the bit LCD and plug it into a computer, you'll find the bit LCD third-party subfolder. This is where you will copy any marquee packs or images, either those you've converted or community packs that may be available. More details on how to do all of this are in the guide linked in the description below. The community is already hard at work creating marquee images for the bid LCD. Let's take a look at a few that were recently released or coming soon. James T. 1968 on the Pixelcade.org forum recently released these absolutely beautiful marquees and many more for the bit LCD. James was kind enough to send them over so we could try them out. He has many more than what you see here, including several for CoinOps X. Speaking of CoinOps X, we'll check out some amazing artwork created by Inigo Montoya and other Barry with 12 popular arcade games and some brief gameplay. I don't currently have any community developed animated marquees to show you, but I did create a simple one to try out using my video editing tool called Filmora. There are free video editors you can use as well if you prefer. I just added the at games animation and some text, exported it as an mp4 file, and copied it to the bit LCD thumb drive. I'm sure we'll see some awesome new animated marquees in the future, but hopefully this will give you a good idea that there is much more that can be done with the bit LCD. That brings us to the end of another video. I'm very much enjoying the bit LCD on my Legends Ultimate 1.1 cabinet. I want to remind you to check out the guide linked below for the latest information and tutorials for enhancing the bit LCD. I want to again thank At Games for sending this device and for all their support, which has been tremendously helpful in getting this information to you. If you have any questions not answered in this video, or you just want to simply express your thoughts on the bit LCD, please comment below. If you found this video and the guide helpful, 
I appreciate your support by clicking the like button, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do. And with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.